<laughs> so again, the mean is the average. Standard deviation, how far from the middle is your spread? In this case, the mean, the symbol for mean looks like that weird U looking symbol, is you're going to take the number of people sampled times the percentage. So the mean's pretty easy to find. <laughs> it says, the workers union at a certain university is quite strong. About 96% of all workers employed by a university belong to the workers union. Recently, the workers went on strike and now a local TV station plans to interview a sample of 10 workers chosen at random to get their opinions on the strike. Estimate the number of workers in the sample who are union members by giving the mean of the relevant distribution, that is the expectation of the relevant <coughs> random variable. Do not round your response. Well, all we're going to do here is take 10 times our 96%, and so we're going to get 9.6. The second part is going to ask for the standard deviation of your distribution. The standard deviation, you're going to do the square root of your n times p times 1 minus p. 1 minus p is when you do what's called the complement of that. 1 minus 96% is 4%, right? So in my formula, I've already figured out the n times the p was 9.6. I'm going to take that times the n, or the 1 minus p, which is my 4%, 0.04. You could write it out the long way if you wanted to. 10 times 9.6 times 1 minus, not 9.6, that's 0.96. <laughs> Wait, 0.96 probably in the book they're going to write it out like that the long way. But we've already done this times this to get this and here we're just subtracting. So I would take the 9.6 times the 0 0.04 and then do the square root of your answer and you come up with what two three decimal places it says. Three decimal places? Yep. Point, um, two, zero. That's what I got, point six, two, zero. So again, that's the long way of interpreting the formula, but we've already found the NP for answer A, and then we can just subtract from 100% to get that second part, unless you want to do it the long way. <laughs> you can get the same answer either way. All right, Anita's fast food chain specializes in hot dogs and garlic fries. <laughs> They're keeping track of the proportion of the customers who decide to eat in the restaurant as opposed to ordering food to go. So it can make decisions regarding the possible construction of an in-store play area. The attendance of its mascot, Sammy, at the franchise location, and so on. Anita's report, or Anita reports that 45% of its customers order their food to go. Suppose that this proportion is correct and that the random sample of 50 individual customers is taken. So, estimate the number of customers in the sample who order their food to go by giving the mean. So I'm going to have n times p, my n is... Fifty, the number of people sampled, and the p is... 0.45, the 45% that ordered their food to go. 22.5, then is your mean. Second part, we want to estimate the standard deviation of our distribution. Our formula says we're doing n times p times 1 minus p. And so if I plug my numbers in there, n times p was the 22.5. And what would I use for 1 minus p? Oh, 
If 45% ordered their food to go, how many didn't order it? 55, right, 0.55, exactly. 1 minus 0.45. 45 ordered to go, 55 did not order it to go. They stayed in store. <laughs> So, to three decimal places we get 3.518. All right. Number 12. At a recent meeting at the American College of Asthma, Allergy, and Immunology, Researchers reported that allergy vaccinations are effective in treating sinusitis, inflammation of the membrane of the linus, lining of the facial sinuses, in individuals predisposed to allergies. Specifically, the researchers report that 98% of the individuals predisposed to allergies find relief from the sinusitis after allergy vaccinations. Suppose that this number is accurate and that 140 individuals priests disposed to allergies are chosen at random and given the allergy vaccination. Estimate the number of individuals in the random sample who do not find relief from their sinusitis. They're trying to be tricky on you to see if you're reading. N is going to be 140. What percent do not find relief? 0 0.02, exactly. So they gave us the percent who found relief, but in the question they wanted the percent that do not find relief. So when we find our mean, then we're going to have? 140 times 0.02. 140 times 0.02, which gave us? 2.8. We're then going to find the standard deviation, n times p times 1 minus p, so n times p was our 2.8. And what number are we going to use for the 1 minus p? 0.72. Mm, oh, you got your answer? No? <laughs> Where did you get that number from? What number is going to go in here for the 1 minus p? 1.8. 0.8. Oh. 9.8, right? If this was 2%, then this is 98%. 1 minus 2% is 98%. So we're going to take our 2.8 times our 0.98 and take the square root of that answer and round it off to three decimal places. Five point Try that again. Oh. <laughs> Your square root is above this key right here. So you would do second function, square root, and then see that says ANS, second function, answer. That will be the square root of your answer. Okay. So you put second function, square root, second function, ANS. Is it um, 1.657? Yep. 1.657. So. The P and the 1 minus P should always add up to 100%. This is 2%, that's the 98%. 1 minus that 2%. All right. The next ones, now we can see if we remember how to do combinations on our calculator. <laughs> Unless we want to do them the long way.